I just got my Galaxy S10 Plus in the mail today. I'm upgrading from an S8. I'm gonna unbox this thing for you guys. This is a 128 gigabyte version. Play with this thing for about a week and do a full review on it. Let's see what we got here. Daniel, there she is. I went with the blue, as you can see here. I'm gonna try and get fingerprints all over this thing immediately. <laughs> you know how it goes. Phone probably needs a charge right there. Gotta get it activated today. Charger. Oh, that's kinda cool. You know, it's the adapter. Earbuds. First impressions holding in the hand, pretty sleek, pretty nice. I gotta say I'm happy with it. Um, I haven't played with, I pre-ordered this thing, so I haven't actually seen one of these in the store. Um, but, yeah, what they're saying is true. This does have a the glass prism back there. This is gonna be, I'm gonna be putting this in a case. I keep all mine in a protective case. Not a full protective case, but just a very, very slim, streamlined rubber case. I find for me also it helps with the grip. These real thin, small bezel phones. I have a hard time manipulating everything without hitting these sides if I don't have it in a little case. So. I'll give you guys a preview of that. All right, that is it. That's what's in the box. Let me get this thing set up. I've been using this for a day now. Uh, I know I said I was gonna give it a week. I'm still gonna give it a week. Uh, I just wanted to point something out here because I'm getting ready to change it. This comes with a screen. <laughs> Put this down right. Protector. Basically, it comes with a plastic film, one of those cheap screen stick-on films. Um, and I, I'm gonna see if you guys can see here, but basically, the one they put on does not go all the way to the edge. If you see right here, there's a gap between this, the display and the protector. And it creates this line that goes all the way around this gorgeous new display. And here's the thing I don't like. I keep my phone in my pocket most of the time um, for carrying purpose. I don't carry it in a clip or anything like that. Right around the cutout there, I don't know if you can see it, that is already starting to collect dirt. And it, it, it makes it so that now when you look at this, instead of this being like a nice clean black display, there's a little oval up there. There's a little distinct oval of dirt collecting. I wanted to film this even though I've only been using this for a day. Um, and I'm gonna give it a week and do my review. The film they put on here is coming off and I just wanted to show you guys why. That, that's all it is. So, in the trash it goes. Cleans up the display, looks a little bit nicer, nicer, screen feels better. I normally don't use a screen protector. Haven't had an issue with scratching up my phone. The only thing I keep in my pocket with my phone is chapstick, so that could be it. If you keep this in a pocket with your keys, you might have a different viewpoint. But for me personally, I like the feel of actual glass front. Spent a week with this guy, I'll give you a comparison here. This is my old phone, this is the Galaxy S8. This is the S10. I actually have them both in the same style case. I love this, this, this case, but just give you guys a little bit of a size comparison there. You can see it is just a little bit bigger. The edge of this case here is set back. It's, it's out of all the cases that I've tried, this one seems to be the furthest set back, which still kind of incorporates the rolling edge. And using this case with a much smaller lip makes it much easier to get to, to swipe down. This case also here, shout out to the case. This does have a little bumper here. When you put your phone down like that, your camera is protected. I'm gonna talk about some of the big features they touted on this phone. And the biggest one being that thumbprint scanner. Now I will tell you, I agree. Thumb reader is much, much faster. Uh, and you'll notice that it does not require the screen to turn on. So it's, it's seamless. So if you were gonna use this, and I did program this for both thumbs just to show you, um, if you were gonna use this for the, the, your primary way to unlock it, it is very fast. This allows you to rotate. My S8 did not have this feature. It allows you to rotate this, but the thing you'll notice is that with this giant screen and all the screen space, when you rotate, everything shrinks and there's a ton of just wasted space. I am 
turning that feature off. Uh, it's, it comes default with it off, but I'm going to leave it off because I find that having everything oriented this way and having the larger space, everything's kind of maximized for this orientation. When you rotate it like this, yeah, it's nice to be able to see your stuff rotated, but it makes everything small and kind of jumbles it up. They have changed the way the multiple app split screen works. The way it works is um, you can get rid of these tabs by flicking them up. If you want to put two in split screen, you press and hold on the app up at the top, and then this menu comes down where app info, open and split screen view, open and pop up window. You use that to select open split screen, and then you go to the other app that you want to put in split screen with. It is a little bit of a different way to do this. All the features and everything like that are still the same in the split screen mode. It allows you to adjust plus or minus who gets more domination of the screen by dragging and dropping that blue line. But the way you get into the split screen is a little bit different. And then to, to close the split screen, you go into the same setup here and then hit the X at the top and it'll go back to your just single view. And some of the specs I got on it, just some of the basic stuff, I was doing some exhaustion tests on it. I am a heavy user of this phone, and I use this for business, so the screen's on a lot, all my emails, communication. I also use this for navigation constantly when I'm roaming around. I keep the screen on during that time, and I use it for my Pandora. Anytime I'm in my car, that's what I listen to. I listen to Pandora. So it's it gets a lot of usage out of it. I was getting between 25 and 35 hours out of this battery full exhaustion from beginning to dead. Imagine you'll get a little bit more than that in normal use because most people probably don't have their screen on as much as I do, but still pretty impressive for over 24 hour period. I didn't get that out of my S8, even when it was brand new. Imagine that it'll drop off some as the battery ages, but it's pretty impressive specs out of the box. The cameras on it are beautiful. This is moving footage with the regular camera. And this is what it looks like with the wide angle camera. A little bit of footage from the selfie cam. This does have some video stabilization in it. Within a week's use, had some glitches. Now it is a brand new phone and I got it on release day. So I expect there's gonna be some patches that work on some of this stuff. There was a patch on release day. The phone completely locked up on me one time, like froze. I was setting up the thumbprint scanner and it just completely went unresponsive. I've also had some glitches with the messaging app specifically. It's locked up on me three times where I had to clear it out and, and it just, it wouldn't respond, wouldn't send messages. One of the times I had to actually reboot the phone to get Messenger to work again. So I'm hoping they send out a patch that fixes the Messenger app. I'm not blown away by this phone. This phone is a great phone, don't get me wrong, but it's not, there's nothing revolutionary about it. If you have a previous Samsung phone, S8, S9, whatever, when you get this phone, you're not gonna be like, holy crap, this is a huge leap forward. I think it performs better. Everything has moved in that direction of, of better performance. The cameras are definitely more stellar and they've tweaked some stuff on the interface. But overall, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good phone. It's a Samsung phone. It's the next logical thing. Do I think it was worth the tooting of the 10th anniversary? Holy crap, this is a magical phone. No, it, it's an upgrade. The thumb threat scanner is probably the biggest jump that they made in technology of this phone. I mean, really, I don't know what else more you can really do with phones. Um, it ha makes clear phone calls, uh, good reception on the Bluetooth and on the Wi-Fi. There's still some glitches going on here. It has a smart lock feature. Now, what the smart lock feature allows you to do is when your phone is locked, it can keep it unlocked given certain criteria. For example, one of them is if it's connected to a certain Bluetooth device, it won't lock your phone. It'll automatically unlock your phone. This is great. I hook it to my car stereo through Bluetooth when I'm driving around. I just tell the smart lock when you're connected to this Bluetooth, don't lock the phone. So anytime I'm in my car, I know the phone's in my possession. I wanna use it. I need to respond to text or change the, the station on Pandora. I don't have to unlock the phone first. It also has a location lock, which technically when it's in a certain location within a range, it should keep the phone unlocked. I didn't have good luck with that. It worked for 
probably the first 30 minutes after assigning its location and then it seems like the phone forgets where it's located at and it started locking the phone again. It does have a lock feature where if nothing is done to this phone for four hours, regardless of it, if it's in smart lock or not, it'll just lock up the phone. I do think that that's a good feature because overnight stuff like that, it just locks your phone. Um, the only downside of that is when it is in your house, if you have it set up to connect to a Bluetooth device in your house and stay unlocked, it's gonna lock regardless. The default after a thumbprint is still a pin number, which means if somebody else in your house, your wife wants to use your phone, they always can even though they don't have the thumbprint. As long as they know the pen, they can still pick it up even if it's locked and unlock your phone with the pen number that you give them so they can still access your phone if they need to. And the lock feature also still allows for emergency dialing as all phones do. It's not gonna lock this phone out from somebody dialing 911. So don't worry about your phone automatically locking and then one of your family members can't dial 911 if they need to. You can always dial the emergency numbers even with the lock screen. All in all, I'm happy with this purchase. I'm happy with the upgrade. I'm not blown away. I didn't think I would be because there's really only so much more you can do with a phone. The big thing was this guy was calling it quits. He was getting glitchy on me, so it was time for him to get replaced. He got replaced. It is an upgrade. This phone is better than my S8. I like it better. I also went with the Plus, a little bit larger, more powerful. Um, I was on the fence about getting the S8 Plus, and I kind of wish I had. Uh, probably about a year into the ownership of this device. I kind of wish I got the S8 Plus. I hope this review was helpful. Just a real basic review of living with the S10 Plus for a week and some of my observations. Thank you guys for watching.